All right, so picture this. Okay. You're planning a trip to Ireland, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe even picking out souvenirs, you know? Yeah. And uh, you stop by a shop drawn to this beautiful Coletta ring. Right. But then this thought pops into your head. Yeah. Like, hold on, you think, can I actually wear this if I'm not Irish? Yeah. Well, lucky for you, today's deep dive is taking us straight to the Emerald Isle. Nice. We're diving into a Love Ireland newsletter, a daily dose of all things Irish. It's fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> the question and and this newsletter, they both show how eager people are to connect with Irish culture, hey. whether through symbols or stories or even travel. Yeah. It speaks to like this allure that Ireland holds for so many people. Absolutely. And you know me, always up for exploring new cultures, yeah. even if it's just through a newsletter. So yeah. let's unpack this whole Cladar ring dilemma. Okay. The newsletter says, yes, anyone can wear one. Right. But it got me thinking, why do symbols like this transcend cultures in the first place? That's a great question. Um, it's like they tap into these universal desires okay. or experiences. The Clado's hands. They symbolize friendship. Right. The heart represents love, and the crown above it represents loyalty. Of course. And those resonate with anyone, yeah. regardless of heritage. Yeah. It's like we're all searching for connection, yeah. longing, you know, something bigger than ourselves. I love that. It's not just a pretty design. Right. It's yeah. like this tiny sculpture of human longing. Yeah, yeah. Which makes you wonder what other symbols have jumped from niche to mainstream Hooray. and what does that say about how we like adopt pieces of other cultures exactly but hold that thought because this newsletter oh it doesn't stop at jewelry okay it takes us on this wild ride through irish history really with a story titled the incredible luck of the irish buckle up this is where the deep dive gets really interesting they use this historical anecdote <laughs> this story of rebellion and uh like unexpected turns of fate to examine this whole luck concept associated with the Irish. Yeah, it's not just about finding four-leaf clovers, is it? No, not at all. So set the scene for us. We're talking about the Young Irelander Rebellion of 1848, right? Yeah, 1848. It was a pivotal moment in Irish history. Okay. Nine men convicted of treason against Queen Victoria. Ooh. Sounds intense, right? Yeah, intense. The newsletter focuses on Thomas Meagher. Okay. One of the convicted men known for his sharp wit. Oh, I love a good historical character, especially one with a sharp wit. A hallmark of Irish humor. Yeah. Which we still see today. So what did he do? Tell me more. So as they're about to be sentenced, the judge, Yeah. probably expecting, you know, pleas for mercy. Of course. Asks if anyone has any last words. Right, right. And Meager, ever the rebel. Yeah. What do you say? Responds with something like, well, this is our first offense. What? But it won't be our last. If you go easy on us this time, no way. We'll do better next time, and we definitely won't get caught. You've got to be kidding. That's amazing. Talk about bold. What did the judge say to that? I can only imagine he wasn't too thrilled with Meager's cheek. Right. But the story takes this surprising turn. Okay. Despite being sentenced to death, their punishments were commuted. Oh, wow. To transportation to Australia. So they escaped the gallows, but were shipped off to the other side of the world. Right. Not exactly a winning lottery ticket, even if they did, you know, dodge a bullet there. Right. This whole luck of the Irish thing is starting to feel, like, ironic. Exactly. And the newsletter digs into that irony. Okay. Because for some of these men, being shipped to Australia wasn't a curse. Really? But an opportunity. Interesting. Many went on to lead fascinating lives there. Okay, so less about, like, lucky breaks and more about making the most of a bad situation. Yeah. Talk about resilience. Absolutely. Wow. Some were eventually pardoned and returned to Ireland as heroes. Oh, wow. Others found success and even political influence in their adopted homeland. Wow, that's... It really challenges our perception of, like, what luck really means. It's like that saying... What is it? Fortune favors the bold, but with a twist. Yeah. Yeah. They were bold, they got into some serious trouble, right. yet they still managed to carve out these incredible lives. Mm-hmm. It makes you wonder, would we even consider them lucky if they hadn't gone through those trials? That's an interesting question. Or is it the whole package, the struggles, the resilience, the unexpected outcomes that makes their story so compelling? This is a fascinating question. Yeah. It really gets to the heart of why we tell stories, right? Yeah. Especially about defying the odds. Like, we're hardwired to find meaning in those narratives. And this Love Ireland newsletter is like 
a, a master class in storytelling. It really is. But it's not all like history and rebellion. It's right. like we've got this like personal travel guide too. Yeah. One minute we're caught up in this dramatic trial. Huh. The next we're transported to the Dingle Peninsula with its rugged cliffs and crashing waves. It's a great example of how they blend these different aspects of Irish culture. Yeah. Showcasing, you know, the natural beauty alongside this rich history. And speaking of atmosphere. Yeah. The newsletter then whisks us away from those dramatic landscapes <laughs> to this cozy pub Thomas Connolly has established in 1861. Wow. I bet those walls could tell some stories. Oh, I bet. Right. Imagine, like, settling in with a pint. Yeah. Surrounded by locals who might share stories passed down through generations. That's right. That's the kind of immersive travel experience, like, so many crave. Yeah. Connecting with the soul of a place. It's like stepping back in time. I love it. And speaking of stepping into different corners of Ireland, okay. the newsletter highlights this contrast between, between Donegal and Monaghan. Oh, interesting. Donegal. Yeah. Now a global hotspot, according to Lonely Planet. Wow. Known for its dramatic scenery. Yeah. Versus Monaghan. Okay. Known for its uh, more tranquil beauty and rolling hills. So you've got your pick. I know, right? Bustling crowds or peaceful countryside. So you're picturing yourself on that Dingle Peninsula, right? Mm -hmm. Wind in your hair, mm -hmm. maybe a clada a ring on your finger. Right. But then Donegal's calling. Oh, yeah. With its, like, trendy status and all. It's a tough choice. I know, right? But it makes you wonder yeah. what makes certain places capture the, like, global imagination right while others retain that quieter charm that's the beauty of travel isn't it yeah discovering those hidden gems right and weighing the appeal of like the familiar versus the unexplored mm -hmm. sometimes you know you want the energy of a bustling hot spot yeah and sometimes you crave the peace of a lesser known haven it's like that saying it's not the destination it's the journey exactly and speaking of journeys okay this newsletter takes us down a very different path too. From like breathtaking landscapes to the heart of Irish humor. Oh, the Irish dad viral video. Yeah. It's a great example of how social media can like right. offer glimpses into everyday culture. Yes. Transcending borders and language barriers. I was cracking up watching that. Right. The dad jokes, the dry wit. It's like so relatable. Yeah. It actually reminded me of this one time. Oh, yeah. But anyway. It's fascinating how humor. Right. Especially this like family-centric humor mm. seems to resonate across cultures. Yeah. Makes you wonder if there's a universal language of laughter. Maybe that's part of the look of the Irish, right? Could be. Finding the humor in everyday situations. Yeah, yeah. But uh, this newsletter isn't all lighthearted fun and games. What else? It delves into some cultural sensitivities, too. Okay. With the uh, things not to say to Irish people section. Right. Always good to be mindful. Yes, especially when traveling. Absolutely. It's a good reminder that, yeah. like, even with the best intentions, you know, mm -hmm. cultural faux pas are possible. It's like learning another language. You need to understand the grammar and the vocabulary right. to communicate effectively. Exactly. And just as languages evolve, so do cultures. Of course. It's about staying informed. Yeah being adaptable and approaching, you know, different cultures with curiosity right. and a willingness to learn. Precisely. Yes. And speaking of learning. Okay. We'd be remiss not to mention that uh, mm. poetry when we speak section. Oh, right. It's a reminder that, you know, yeah. exploring a culture goes beyond right. tourist attractions and trendy destinations. Of course. Yeah. It's about engaging with, like, mm -hmm. the art, the language, yeah. the very essence of what makes a place unique. It's like we've been given this, like, taste of Ireland. Yes. A bite of apple tart, if you will. Okay. Since the newsletter also includes a recipe. Oh, nice. For this traditional Halloween treat. And just like that apple tart, mm. Irish culture is just... <laughs> yes. Full of flavor and richness with layers waiting to be, you know, right. savored and appreciated. And Absolutely. From the symbolism of the Claddagh ring mm -hmm. to that rebellious spirit of the young Irelanders. Right. From the breathtaking landscapes to the everyday humor. It's true. We've only scratched the surface. We really have. Okay. We've explored how culture is shaped by history. Right. How it evolves and adapts. Mm. And how even the smallest details yes. can reveal these broader truths about a place and its people. I completely agree. So that brings us to our final provocative thought for you today. Okay. Considering how symbols like the Cladar ring spread and evolve. Right. 
What does it say about Irish culture that so many are drawn to it? Interesting. What makes a place or its people lucky? Yeah. Is um, it simply a matter of chance? Right. Or is there something more profound at play? Like what? A spirit of resilience. Okay. A knack for storytelling. <laughs> a warmth that, you know, transcends borders. It really makes you think. It does, and we'd love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> Share your insights on our social media channels, and let's keep the conversation going. Great idea. Until next time, slan go for you.